There are lots of different routes into literary translation. I started out by attending the British Centre for Literary Translation Summer School, um, where at the summer school I was awarded one of the very first um, British Centre for Literary Translation mentorship schemes um, uh, and was mentored by Nikki Harman, a very eminent translator from Chinese to English. As a result of that mentorship scheme, I was um, given my first book to translate and uh, it was on that project that Nikki and I worked together through the mentorship. Um, once I had started on that book, um, I got into doing lots of other short kinds of different types of literary translation um, and from there it, it just kind of snowballed, I guess, so that's how I first first got into literary translation. I had a reasonably um, orthodox route into translation in that I, I have a master's in literary translation, uh, but I didn't do that until, until I'd, I'd fallen in love with it through the summer school, at the BCLT summer school. I felt that the relationship between the workshop leader, who was Anne McLean, and the author, who was an Argentinian writer called Carlos Gamero, just seemed like the most fun you could have doing a job. And I wasn't really aware up until that point that literary translation was something you could do as a career. Um, I think what helped me most was having a sort of unofficial mentorship with, with the workshop leader at the BCLT Summer School. So Anne McLean was really influential in terms of helping me meet the right people. We worked on short stories together and then moved on to do uh, a few novels. Um, but mainly she just introduced me to the right people and held the door open to that world for me. Um, so it was a combination of doing the Masters and having that unofficial mentorship with Anne that, that got me started. One way to get into literary translation is through the academic route and there are lots of Masters programmes available. I think an MA in literary translation is a fantastic way to start your career in translation. If I can use our MA here at UEA as, as an example, because it's the one that I know best, what we do is try to give people a, a good ba basic knowledge of translation um, and from an analytical and critical standpoint. So for example, we, we talk about how you analyze literature. So what does it mean to have idioms in a text, for example? And then we think about, well, how might you translate that? So we analyze it both um, from a literary perspective, but then we go one step further and think about how we would deal with those things in translation. We also talk about how to deal with different genres. So we might look at detective fiction, for example, which is very popular right now, or we might talk about how to translate poetry or plays or children's literature or novels and so forth. Um, historical texts are another genre that we look at. So we talk about many of these different issues but we um, analyze them particularly from the aspect of how would we translate them and what does it mean to translate them. The Masters is the Masters at UEA is very academic and it, what it gives you is a good grounding in terms of backing up your work, explaining choices that you've made to publishers and feeling confident for the reasons that you've made those choices. We think about issues such as reception, so how would the audience um, understand these texts in the source culture and then in the target culture? Do we want to change certain things as we're translating them? Why or why not? Are there things that would be more appropriate for a particular audience? And so on and so forth. So there are lots of things that we look at. Also in our MA program, students get a lot of literary translation practice, so they're regularly translating things, whether it's a poem or an excerpt from a novel or a short story, whatever it is, and they get that workshopped and analyzed. So you're getting the analytical materials and you're getting theoretical ideas about translation. You learn about the history of translation, you also get translation practice. At the same time, you also could, for example, go on an internship. You could work for the BCLT, getting um, experience organizing events or um, doing publicity and so on. You might also do an internship for ARC Publications, which only publishes poetry and translation. So you get actual work experience at the same time. 
Um, so I think that in many ways studying an MA is a great route to translation as a career because you get all of the tools you need in order to build a career and you also get to network, you get to meet people who could hire you, you can meet publishers, you can meet editors, you can get to know authors whose work you might want to translate and so on. Um, obviously you can build a career as a translator without doing an MA but it's a lot harder because you don't have that knowledge necessarily and you don't have all of those connections. Um, also in the MA you get a chance to meet other people who are at the same stage of their career so you get a lot of support and encouragement and you work together towards building a career in translation. One way to get into the profession is to offer to do readers reports for publishers. Uh, publishers are often looking for people to read books that they can't read themselves so this is a great way to connect to editors um, and get your name out there. Well, I first got in, interested in translating quite a while ago when I wanted to translate a small book by Albert Camus, which was virtually unknown in Britain. And I had put the project aside, and then one morning I was listening to Radio 4, and I heard Rebecca Carter, who was the commissioning editor for Suite Française by Irene Nemirovsky, and she was talking about the book and how it was going to be translated into English. And I thought that it's a sign that I should really do something because the book I had wanted to translate by Camus was also written during the war, right at the moment. He was in the resistance, was written in the underground and published after the war. So I decided that I should actually do something. So I looked up Chatter and Windus in the telephone book and I phoned Rebecca Carter, asked to speak with her and I was put through. And we had a long conversation during which I was pushing the Camus book, which I wanted to translate, but it transpired that I had a lot in common with Nemirovsky um, in my personal background, my family's history, etc. And by the end of the conversation, she asked me if I would like to submit a sample translation for Sweet Francaise. So of course I said yes immediately, thinking that if I did a good enough job on the sample, I would get the Camus, because I never really believed that I would get Sweet Francaise. So I was tremendously fortunate in doing that and I would recommend to any, any aspiring translators to do the unorthodox, pick up the telephone, make your own luck. Uh, I, I got into translation when I was uh, living in, in Dresden for a few years. I lived there uh, from when I was about 23 to 26 or so and uh, I had a, I was on paternity leave. Uh, my son was about a year and a half old and he would sleep in the afternoons and that gave me an, uh, an hour and a half or so to, to do something and I had been given lots of poetry in German by a really great local bookseller and I felt I wasn't quite getting it so I started translating the poems into English really for myself because I wanted to, to, to be able to get them properly in my own language and and then I suppose, you know, once you've done a few, you want to, you want to show them to other people and ended up sending them to, to literary magazines and they got accepted and then you think, oh, okay, well, maybe I'll, I'll carry on. So I think a mixture of living abroad and, uh, and, and the, the encouragement of being accepted by small magazines really got me going. And then, and then I, and I started gradually to see that people do translation as a freelance activity. And, uh, and saw there was a way out from uh, the, the soul-destroying office jobs that I was in when I got back to the UK to pay the rent.